uh, let's say for example this is your uh, design to simulation file so for the costing we will do the costing for the last distillation column so you open your design to simulation file and then click on the last distillation column for the shortcut uh, distillation uh, not the fractionation not the rigorous distillation okay when you are seeing this window or uh, the shortcut distillation you can click view results and then you scroll down then you will see this table that consists of the uh, results for different uh, reflux ratio so we'll be doing the costing for different reflux ratio so what you can do with this table you copy and paste this table into an excel file okay so i've already copied so this is the result so as you can see here in total there are seven reflux ratios so for your simulation the one that you use for your individual design most likely is the one that is 130 percent of minimum reflux ratio which is this one for the costing you need to choose two reflux ratios that are lower than the 130 percent of the minimum reflux and two reflux ratio that are higher than the 130% uh, of minimum reflux. For example, let's say I choose 110% and 120%. So I will remove the 105%. And then for the two reflux ratios higher than the 130%, I will choose 140 and the 175. So I will delete the 200%. Okay, stop okay after obtaining all the data for different reflux ratios uh, we need to uh, determine the cost for the distillation column for the different reflux ratios the cost for the heat exchanger in this case reboiler and condenser for the uh, different reflux ratio and then we summarize all the cost for different reflux ratio so uh, the first thing that we need to do is how do we uh, determine the cost for the distillation column okay now to determine the cost of the distillation column uh, when you refer to reference most likely the cost depends on the height of the distillation column so how do we determine the height of the distillation column for different reflux ratio the height basically is a function of the Tray. the larger the, the more trays we have the higher the distillation column so in this case the stages is the theoretical tray so firstly we need to uh, round it up to a full number for example for uh, 110 percent minimum reflux ratio the stages is 19.7 we round it up to 20 so in total there are 20 stages and we do the same for the rest 14 12 10 and 8 so these are the theoretical stages now to determine the height we need to convert the stages into the uh, the ac actual tray actual number of tray so uh, for this case you can use the efficiency the tray efficiency that you have used for the individual equipment design for example, if the efficiency, the tray efficiency is 50%, uh, you can just assume that for all reflux ratio, the tray efficiencies are 50%. So if the tray effic efficiencies are 50%, that means the actual number of trays will be uh, the theoretical number of stages divided by the efficiency then you can do the same for the rest so this will be the actual number of trays actual number of trays and then from here you need to translate this actual number of trays into the height of the column uh, for sim to simplify the method you can just uh, use a tray spacing of uh, 50 centimeter so 
roughly for this for the 130 percent the height of the column will be uh, 24 column times uh, 50 centimeter so it's 0 0.5 meter okay this one is just an approximation you also need to include the uh, liquid hole up on the bottom and also the vapor disengagement uh, area on top okay so this one is just a very rough calculation so you can do the same for the rest of the reflux ratios okay i made mistake here i should highlight this one okay so this is the height of the column as you can see here, the higher the reflux ratio, the shorter the column. Besides uh, the height of the distillation column, we also need the diameter of the column. Okay, the diameter of the distillation column is more or less the same as the diameter of the tree that you can get from your uh, rigorous distillation results. For example, let's say in this case, the diameter of the column is 0 0.5 meter. Okay, and then uh, if you do the rigorous distillation for the rest of the reflux ratio, you will see that actually the diameter of the column does not change much when you change the reflux ratio so for easier calculation we can just assume that the diameter of the column is similar okay for all reflux ratio so now by knowing the height of the column and the diameter of the column we can determine what is the cost of that column Okay, let's say now you already know that the height of the column is 10 meter and the diameter of the column is 0 0.5 meter so now we will be using this chart to determine what is the cost of that uh, distillation column without the tray so it's just a hollow column so this chart right can be uh... okay you can get this chart from this book Okay, uh, the authors are Peter Timmer House and West and the title of the book is Plant Design and Economics for Chemical Engineers. Inside this book, you will find lots of costing chart to determine the cost of the distillation column, the tray, heat exchangers, etc. etc. Before you use this chart, right, you have to take note on the time base used in this chart. So this chart was made in 2004 so that means we can only use this chart to determine the price of the equipment in 2004 I will explain how uh, we can use this chart to determine uh, the cost in this year 2015 or 2014 okay so now let's use this chart to find the price for the distillation column in 2004 we know that the diameter of the column is 0 0.5 meter and then the height of the column is 10 meter the x-axis is the height while the y-axis is the cost and then you can see here there are four lines four different lines these lines represent the different diameter okay so let's use the height first the height is 10 meter we follow until it hits the line for 0 0.5 meter 0 0.5 meter is the first line which is this line so this is where the two lines intersect so from here we can determine what roughly how much is the cost of the distillation column so it's around here so the price is uh, roughly around 16 and then if you notice the 
y axis the we have to multiply this by 1000 so that means the cost of the distillation column is 16000 okay 16000 us dollar now uh, another thing that you have to take note is the material factors if you are using stainless steel if your material is if your distillation column is made of stainless steel you have to multiply the equipment cost that you got just now with two okay so you can see the material factors here so multiply by two because of the material factors and you also need to include the pressure factor let's say for example your distillation column is operating at 10 bar so you have to include the pressure factor for 10 bar 5 to 10 bar the pressure factor is 1.1 so you have to multiply this with 1.1 okay then by doing this you will get the costing for the distillation column hollow distillation column without the trace previously we already determined the cost of the column only without the tray so now we will determine the cost of the tray the cost of the tray is only the function of the diameter okay so the diameter for example the diameter of the tray is uh, quite similar to the diameter of the column let's say the diameter is 0 0.5 meter okay so 0 0.5 meter is 0 0.1 0 0.2 0 0.3 4 5 0 0.5 meter is here and then uh, the type of distillation column here is a shift tray so we'll be using line number one okay you can see here line number one is for shift shift tray number two is for valve number three is for bubble cap so in this case because our distillation column is a shift uh, tray distillation column we'll be using line number one so the two will intersect here and then we will get the cost per plate which is 200 dollars okay the cost per plate is 200 dollars and then we know that we have uh, 20 trays okay so we multiply by 20 and then you have to include the material factor let's say your material your tray is made of stainless steel so you have to multiply by 1.7 okay then by doing this you will get the total cost of three now you have to add this total of cost of three with the distillation column to get the total cost of the distillation column for the costing for the condenser and the boiler uh, actually uh, the size of the condenser and the size of the reboiler do not change much when we change the reflux ratio so in this case if you have already designed your reboiler in the individual equipment design pull out the area of the reboiler here let's say for example the area of your reboiler is uh, 40 meter square okay let's say it's 40 meter square then you can just assume that all for different reflux ratio the area is the same as the one that you have calculated 40 meter square okay so how can we use this area of reboiler to determine the cost of the reboiler we'll be using the same chart okay you'll be using the same method by using chart the chart you can uh, obtain from the reference book that i've mentioned previously so i'll show you an example how to use this chart for example the area of the reboiler is 40 meters square so 40 is this one is 10 20 30 40 40 is here and then uh the material for this uh reboiler is stainless steel so stainless steel 
as you can see here is a uh, line number four okay so we have to uh, find where the two lines intersect so 40 meter square and then line number four is here so this is where the two lines intersect and then from here we can determine what is the cost the cost is around 60, 70, 80, 90, 60, 60, dollar. Okay, so the cost is 60, thousand dollar. Then you have to also include the pressure factor and the type factor. If the pressure is uh, 10 bar, you don't uh, you can just multiply by one but if the pressure is high between 10 to 20 bar let's say in this example the pressure is 15 bar if 15 bar we have to multiply the results that we have obtained previously with 1.1 and then you also need to include the type factors let's say if we are using a kettle reboiler so that means the result that we obtained previously must be multiplied by 1.3 and that will give you the cost of your reboiler okay let's say we already obtained the cost of the column in 2004 okay because the chart was made in 2004 so now how do we use this cost in 2004 to get the cost in 2013 there are two index that we can use to convert the cost from various years to the current year so one of them is the marshall and shrift index okay you can google to find what are the values of the marshall and shrift index every year so every year this index will change the other one is the chemical engineering plant cost index okay for example, the Marshall and Shrift index in 2004 is 500. This one is just a, a fictional number. I don't know exactly what is the index in 2004. And then the Marshall and Shrift index in 2013 is 600. So we want to find the cost of column in 2013. So how do we use the Marshall and Shrift index to calculate this? It's simply just by dividing the Marshall and Shrift index in 2013 with the index in 2004 and then we multiply with the cost in 2004 so by right the cost of the column will increase because of the inflation so you can see how the cost of the column in 2013 will be 60,000 which is 10,000 more expensive than the price in 2004